In this video, I will provide you with a complete roadmap to learn DevOps from scratch in a structured and easy way. But let me be clear, this is not a normal DevOps roadmap video where I just talk about things to learn. Instead, I will also provide you with explanations on why you should be learning these tools and also attach resources to help you know where to learn them from. So without wasting any time, let's start with the video. DevOps engineers are one of the highest paid professionals in the tech industry today. Average salary for a DevOps engineer in the United States is around $130,000, whereas in India, it's around 10 lakhs per year. And in this video, we are going to be discussing different tools and technologies you need to know to become a DevOps engineer. Now to properly understand this DevOps roadmap, it is necessary for you to know these two important things. The first is, what do DevOps engineers exactly do? So DevOps engineers are someone who are responsible for deploying an application, which includes creating servers, databases, and also configuring them. Along with that, they are also responsible for monitoring and troubleshooting. So they need to make sure that the software does not break when it is released and it is working fine all the time. The second thing you need to know is, DevOps engineers love automation. They will try to automate every single thing. DevOps engineers automate repetitive stuff. They also automate the creation of infrastructure for an application or configuration. Even the complete deployment is automated. So these are the two important things you need to know to properly understand this DevOps roadmap and to know where are all the different tools used in the DevOps lifecycle. With that being said, now let's look at the DevOps roadmap. I have a very nice document created here, which has information about all the tools and technologies you need to know to become a DevOps engineer. And this document is kind of lengthy because I also have links that will provide you with resources to learn each of these tools. If you want me to share this document, do let me know in the comment section and I will share this to you on LinkedIn or on GitHub. And now let's start with looking at all the different tools you require to become a great DevOps engineer. Let's go. As we already know, a DevOps engineer is someone who is responsible for deploying and maintaining application. So it's very important for a DevOps engineer to know how is an application created from the start to the very end. So when learning DevOps, you should always start with basics of SDLC. SDLC stands for Software Development Lifecycle and it's nothing but just step-by-step -step process that software goes through from planning to coding to testing and the very end to the deployment. So as a DevOps engineer, you need to know all the phases that software goes through before it is released in the production. So I have resources here attached to learn SDLC and as a DevOps engineer, you don't need to know any definitions or go deep in it, but just have an idea of what are different phases and where do DevOps fall in these different phases. Learning SDLC will give you a good start to understand what do DevOps engineer exactly do and what is your duty as a DevOps engineer. So you should always start with basics of SDLC or software development lifecycle. After learning basics of SDLC, you now need to focus on the real technologies and we start with operating systems. As a DevOps engineer, you will be working on systems to create application, to set up database and lot more. So having knowledge of operating systems is very, very important. In DevOps, we generally use Windows or Linux for deploying applications. Mostly it's going to be Linux. So you need to have good knowledge of Linux. In Linux, you need to know the shell commands, basic shell commands to do everyday task. You also need to know SSH. SSH is something we use to connect to a server remotely. DevOps engineers use SSH to connect to servers in the cloud. You also need to know what is virtualization, how it works. Then you need to know how to work with text editors in Linux, which can be either Vim or Nano. Then you need to know the commands to change file permissions or file ownership using chmod or chpone command. You also need to know how to work with packages using package management like apt or yum. As a DevOps engineer, you will also be checking processes running in your systems or kill them, which can be done using ps or kill commands. So you need to have a good idea of different commands when working as a DevOps engineer. And I have this video which explains all the important Linux commands you need to know as a DevOps engineer. But you can also refer to other resources attached in this, which can help you learn Linux properly. But whenever you learn any technology, make sure to practice and do hands-on. So to practice Linux, you can try out these things which is setting up a web server on your Linux machine or setting up database or creating and managing users. You can also try out installing different DevOps tools like Docker, Jenkins, Terraform on an Ubuntu Linux machine, which will help you teach Linux properly. And this is also something 
that you will be doing every day as a DevOps engineer. So this is Linux that you need to obviously know to become a DevOps engineer. Next thing to learn in our DevOps roadmap is scripting or programming. We already know DevOps engineers love automation and they will automate everything by creating scripts. So as a DevOps engineer, it is very important for you to have knowledge of any one scripting language, which can be Bash or Python or Golang. So now most of you might be confused and thinking, is coding required for DevOps roles? So the answer is yes, coding is required. And we use coding or scripting to automate these different stuff like backup automation or working with APIs or integration with other DevOps tools. So you will need to have knowledge of any one programming or scripting language. You don't have to necessarily learn it right in the beginning of your journey. I learned Python one year after I became DevOps engineer. So you can also learn it later. And here are different resources that will help you learn scripting or programming for DevOps engineers. Next important thing in our DevOps roadmap is Git. Git is super, super important. And you cannot become a DevOps engineer without knowing Git. Every application on the internet will have code. And this code is actually stored somewhere remotely on GitHub or GitLab. As a DevOps engineer, you will need to clone this code on different servers to host them. And you can do that only by knowing Git. So you will need to know the concept of branching, how to create, switch or delete branches. You also need to know the important Git commands, which will let you clone and push changes on the remote repositories. Also some advanced commands like cherry pick or rebase. Next, you also need to know pull request or merge request because in companies we do not push code directly on the main branch. We rather create merge request, which lets you check the code before pushing to the main branch where the CI CD is set up. So Git is also a very important aspect in CI CD, in GitOps or storing infrastructure as code files. So you will need to know all of these things related to Git to become a DevOps engineer. And I have some resources attached here. I also have a video created, which is completely hands-on to teach you Git and GitHub. Or else you can also try out this game, which teaches you Git by playing it. Learning Git. After Git, you need to learn networking and security. When you deploy an application as a DevOps engineer, you need to make sure that the users are able to access the application, the traffic is flowing, and the information is sent. Also, you need to make sure that the application is secure and there is no unauthorized access. So to manage traffic, to enable security, you need to have your networking concepts cleared. And as a DevOps engineer, you will need to know what is IP addressing, how it works, what are ports and protocols, what are different networking services like DHCP, DNS, how they work and all these other things. I have a very good YouTube video that will help you learn networking fundamentals for a DevOps engineer. And you can also refer to this networking course or this networking book. After learning Linux, Git and networking, you are now ready to learn cloud. Cloud computing has been very popular and companies now deploy their applications on cloud providers like AWS, Azure or GCP rather than hosting them on premises. So learning cloud is very, very important. You don't have to learn all of them. You just need to master one and get certified in one of the clouds. The three popular ones are AWS, Azure, GCP. You can go and learn any of them. I started with AWS, but you can also learn Azure, which is very popular these days or GCP as well. When learning any cloud, you don't have to master all the services because there are around 200, 300 services in AWS. But as a DevOps engineer, you only need to know what is a VPC and how to create it, what is EC2, S3, and all these different services. My recommendation would be to learn cloud by appearing certifications so you can learn as well as get certified in cloud. After learning cloud, you will have knowledge to create servers for your application and also set up database by running Linux commands on them. And this is fine for just one or two applications, but when you have multiple applications, you have to do this again and again and again and again. And we all know DevOps engineers hate repetitive tasks, so we can automate this using Terraform and Ansible. Terraform and Ansible use the concept of infrastructure as code, which is to write down the infrastructure and its configuration in the form of code. So if you want to have five servers of Linux operating system, you can write it down in Terraform and you want to install MySQL database on all of them with just single command, you can use Ansible for it. So Terraform and Ansible are very popular infrastructure as code tool, which is used for infrastructure provisioning and for configuration management. So using Terraform, you can create infrastructure and using Ansible, you can configure that infrastructure. Here are some resources which can help you teach Terraform and Ansible. And moving on, the next thing you need to know to become a DevOps engineer is having knowledge on microservices and containerization. Microservices is an architecture diagram where you deploy an application 
as independent services for better scaling and management. And when you use microservices architecture, the application is usually deployed as a container. A container is a package which includes code, dependencies, and everything required to run the application on any operating system. Docker is a very popular container technology. So you need to know how Docker works, what are different Docker commands, how to write Docker files, how to push and pull Docker images. Also have general idea of what is microservices, because typically when you work as a DevOps engineer, your company will be having application using microservices architecture. So you need to know microservices and also how Docker works, what are common Docker commands and all the other things. Here are some resources that will help you learn what is microservices and also teach you Docker. Next thing to learn in our DevOps roadmap is the very popular Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a container orchestrator tool that is used to manage multiple Docker containers. Many companies use Kubernetes to manage their Docker container. So it is very, very important for you to have knowledge on Kubernetes if you want to become a DevOps engineer. But Kubernetes is very vast. So what do you need to know? You should be knowing what is Kubernetes and how it works. You should also know how to create Kubernetes clusters and manage them. Then you also need to have knowledge on how to deploy applications on Kubernetes, which is how to create manifest files for deployments, replica sets or different Kubernetes objects. You also need to have knowledge on different Kubernetes commands. So this is very, very important. And remember Kubernetes is complex. So you will require knowledge on all the previous tools before learning Kubernetes. Here is a good resource that will help you understand what are different prerequisites you need to know before learning Kubernetes and also other resources that will help you learn Kubernetes from scratch. Every tool that we have discussed till now in this DevOps roadmap is enough for you to deploy an application manually. But we know DevOps engineers do not do anything manually. So we use CI CD pipeline to automate the deployment of an application. Using CI CD pipeline, you can automatically deploy an application to production after you make any minor change. And as a DevOps engineer, you will need to know how to create CI CD pipeline, how to integrate test in your pipeline, how to trigger a build and lot more. Here are different resources to teach you that. And in the market right now, there are different CI CD tools like Jenkins, GitLab CI, GitHub Actions, Travis CI, Circle CI, and lot more. A company might be using any of these, so you don't have to know all of them. You just need to know one of the CI CD tools and then learning other will be very easy for you. After the application is deployed on production, DevOps engineers need to continuously monitor and check if the application is working fine, if there are any issues, if the CPU is more or memory is more and lot many other things. So a DevOps engineer need to have good knowledge on how to monitor these applications. To monitor applications, we use different tools like Prometheus, Grafana, CloudWatch, Nagios or ELK stack. So you need to have knowledge on these tools and understand how you can use them to monitor your applications. Along with monitoring, you also need to know how logging works. So logging is something that will help you tell what is the problem and it is very important in troubleshooting. So here are some resources that will teach you how you can use Prometheus, an open source tool to monitor the applications on Kubernetes. Once you have learned everything that we have discussed till now in this DevOps roadmap, you are then ready to look at the advanced stuff which is GitOps and Service Mesh. So GitOps is a way in DevOps where you consider Git repository as a single source of truth, which means anything on the Git repositories is going to be applied on the end application. So GitOps is done using a very popular tool, which is Argo CD. And you need to know Argo CD because many companies are using it. So GitOps can be done using Argo CD, but before learning GitOps, you need to know what is Git, what is CI CD, what is infrastructure as code, which is required to implement GitOps. Next is service mesh. When you have a microservices architecture, you're going to have many services and many problems. So service mesh is used to solve problems like service discovery, traffic management, monitoring, logging, and also encryption. Istio, a very popular service mesh is used by many big companies. So it is very important for you to learn service mesh as well, because many companies have now started using it. So this is our DevOps roadmap to help you become a great DevOps engineer. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. If you also want this document to be shared, do let me know in the comment section. Please like this video and subscribe to CloudChamp. Thank you and have a good day.